Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Unfound Now. I am Unfound's host, Ed Denzel. If you will remember the last video I did for Unfound Now, I was over in Orlando. As you can see, I am back at my condo in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Before I get started, I hope you will consider subscribing to Unfound's podcast channel right here on YouTube. And please like this video. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. That helps us with the YouTube algorithms. And even more so, once you subscribe, once you subscribe, please hit that little bell button so that when we upload videos such as this one or when I do the live shows on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, it will alert you uh, to all these things going on on this channel. Uh, if you look at everything on this channel, we have a lot of videos, a lot of great information including Unfound Now, which I think is just about celebrating its one-year anniversary. Anniversary. It was during the summer of uh, 2020 uh, that we started this. Uh, the first uh, disappearance that we covered back then was Linda Stoltfus's, which uh, coincidentally, uh, just this past week, uh, the man who killed her uh, pled guilty to, those, to these charges, and Linda's remains have been found. Now, in this disappearance, we will be uh, talking about the disappearance of Candy Gonzalez from Prestonburg, Kentucky. She is 36 years old. She is a mother, and she disappeared on June 1st of 2021, so uh, roughly not quite two months ago. I'm recording this video on July 25th of 2021. The reason we do Unfound Now is for education purposes and publicity purposes. Obviously, just doing this video, talking about her disappearance, putting the correct uh, tags to this video is going to help more people uh, find out about her disappearance. And who knows, uh, somebody could come across this video and, and figure out that they know something about her disappearance, which is still unsolved. Of course, it's for publicity purposes. But also at Unfound, everything we do from the episodes that come out every Friday to the live show to the books uh, that are now available on Amazon.com. I think we have eight of them now, and number nine is being worked on regarding disappearances that have been covered on the program. I conduct a think tank uh, for premium Patreon members on Sunday evenings, patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast. I do the newsletter. All of it is based on the idea of education trying to educate the public uh, about disappearances. Uh, what they should see when they read a disappearance article, what are those points that should stick out to them? Because I believe that uh, educating the public, getting the public, um, you know, learning more about how disappearances happen, how they are investigated, and how they are solved is going to cause more disappearances to be solved, and that is surely what we want at Unfound. Now, allow me to uh, go through some of the details, uh, the general details. I want you to know that I've not spoken to anybody in uh, Candy's uh, family. I will not be doing any theorizing as to what I believe happened to Candy during, uh, during this video. All I will be doing is um, talking about the information that has been in the news, how it should be analyzed, and I'm also going to be showing you a video of Candy uh, on the day that she disappeared, showing uh, her running off. And in fact, that's going to be one of the main educational points of this particular video. If you've seen these Unfound Annals before, you know that um, I like to pick out certain topics for each um, disappearance that we cover on Unfound Now, and I usually make it uh, three points. Three, for some reason, it seems to be an important number to me. The circumstances for Candy's disappearance, uh, once again, it happened on June 1st of 2021. Um, from what I've read, I've not been there. I've not spoken to any of her friends, anybody in her family, nobody in law enforcement or anything, but something was going on with Candy that day in that area of Kentucky. Uh, she had had a breakup with her boyfriend. And seemingly, I don't know if he had kicked her out of a car or she was just walking down the road uh, near where she lived to blow off some steam. 
But she ended up running into, uh, on a road called, uh, she was on Abbott Creek Road, and she ran into some what have been called teenage boys. Uh, I've read it was three of them. And it sounds to me, and her family has posted on Facebook and elsewhere that this is what happened, that they were harassing her for some reason, whether it was because they're just bad kids or uh, I don't know if she was acting strangely. I'm not sure. But uh, the, the family uh, believes that these uh, boys, teenage boys, said something to her to put Candy uh, even further into an agitated state. And so she went down the street. She ended up at somebody's house outside. And Candy was there, and she asked uh, the woman who was there to call Candy's mother. Now, how this woman would have known uh, Candy's mother's number, I don't know if Candy had a phone, a cell phone with her. Um, did, did Candy just know the number off the top of her head, which seems weird to me in these days of cell phones. We, we usually don't know cell phone numbers anymore. We just look at our phone and look for the name and hit the button. But she went up to this house, and somehow her mother was called. But while um, this woman got Candy's mother on the phone, Candy decided to run off. And you're going to see a video of that here shortly. She ran into the backyard. She was walking, and then she ran straight back from the house uh, to the edge of these woods. And there's a creek there, Abbott Creek. And you will see her in this video kind of, uh, you know, kind of jump down into the creek bed and then go left, which would be generally in an east or north, northeast, east direction. And she was never seen again. And searches have been done for her, and but she is still missing almost two months later. So the the points that I want you to think about regarding uh, this uh, particular disappearance, once again, not just raising publicity for Candy's disappearance, but what can we learn about disappearances in general in, in looking at Candy's disappearance, what we know about it uh, almost two months in. These are the three learning points um, for this particular episode of Unfound Now. Number one, how a person runs – matters. And the reason this is going to be a topic is because there's a lot of video out there for a lot of disappearances, surveillance video, still shots, door doorbell cameras, things like that. And it plays they play a huge role in disappearances. And so we need to talk about how should we look at these types of videos? What are we seeing when we see a missing person on one of them? Uh, and I will should be showing you a video of Candy uh, running away from this house. Number two, Mental health is not guaranteed from moment to moment. And I'll be talking about some of the disappearances that have been covered on Unfound as examples as well. And number three, searches fail even when you have video. So now I'm going to go uh, to illustrate the first point. Uh, I'm going to put this video up on the screen, talk about it, show you uh, some things, and then I will come back to cover the other two uh, important points for this episode of Unfound Now. Okay, for point number one, how a person runs matters. Going to be uh, showing you a video. Uh, I need to, give, need to give credit to WSAZ.com for this video. Uh, I will have the video muted, but uh, you, of course, can see uh, Candy uh, right there in the center of your screen. And I'm going to be uh, going back and forth in a, uh, through a small section of this video and pausing it uh, a few times to show you uh, what I mean. And it's important, it's important because you can find many videos, pictures of missing people out there. The, once again, walking away from their house, running away from their house, running away from a car, walking away from a car. And that is certainly good information to have, but what needs to be paid attention to is how is that person running? What is their body language? What is their head doing? Are they turning around? Or what are they doing with their arms? Uh, if they're walking, are they stumbling? 
Uh, do, they, do they seem to be walking in a straight line? Uh, this is all very important. In fact, uh, just recently with the, the disappearance of Chance Engelbert, where there were multiple videos of him on the day of his disappearance, uh, I went through that. And that is a video you can find right here on the Unfound Podcast channel. So let's take a look at this uh, once uh, with a run through. And uh, then I will go back and kind of pause just to show you some things. All right, so there is Candy. Uh, she's walking. Uh, she's in this person's backyard. And uh, there is uh, the sheriff talking about he's, uh, what he's saying is she seems distressed. And now there she is. She's walking, walking, running, running. Uh, kind of, I wouldn't say jumps, but I wouldn't say stumbles either, goes down to this creek bed, and then you can see her running off to the left, and that's where this, uh, very short video, uh, ends. So, let's take a look at this, and just in pausing the screen, uh, right here, uh, to start this over again, make sure I get it all there. It would seem to me that she has some very unusual mannerisms going on. Uh, the hand to the mouth, arms uh, wiping her face, and then just as she's going down there, you can see that she's kind of playing with her hair. Now, I have to tell you, um, if you were to go to YouTube, and I'll just pause it here once again. I'll show it one more time so you can see. There she is her walking like that, in my opinion, if you, if you were to go to YouTube and, or be on you right here on YouTube and do a search for people running away from things, for example, criminals running away from the cops, they have uh, certain tendencies. And of course, most of them are running. None of them are walking. They only walk if they think that they've gotten away. Um, probably the best kind of video to watch would be one where there's a helicopter, um, following uh, a car chase and the car chase ends and the, everybody jumps out of the car and they're running and the cops jump, jump out of their cars and they're running. Uh, that's probably the best kind, those the best kinds of videos to watch to see how people who are trying to get away from other people act. They're running as fast as they can, usually taking risks and usually looking behind them. They're looking behind how close is the, the police officer behind me? Is he catching me? Is he even behind me at all? Well, if he's coming this direction, then maybe I need to go that direction because you can only run away from somebody if you know where that person is coming from, how close that person is, is this person taking a shortcut, etc. And in this video, first of all, she is not running, at least to start. And in fact, I would say in looking at her, it seems to me that she, that Candy is stumbling. If you were to take a look uh, at this video, um, you know, I have no ability to slow it down, but you know, she looks to me like she's stumbling. I think it's a kind of a weird choice there. She tries to go between these trees. She's playing with her hair. And even though I know just seemingly moments before this, she was having problems with um, these teenage boys in the neighborhood, she is not acting like a person, man or woman, who is getting chased by anyone, whether or not it's three teenage boys or one teenage boy or one grown man, three grown man, grown men or, or whatever. She seems to be more just stumbling around. Now, it very well may be because uh, she has something mental going on or maybe she was drinking that day or on drugs. I don't know. I guess there are a lot of different possibilities. But... In general, she does not seem to be uh, in, in a clear-headed uh, mode, uh, it, what you see at the beginning of this video. In addition, uh, right here, um, as, her, you know, the filming is not that great, but you can see as she walks there, she's kind of playing with her hair right, right there as it gets like to the bottom of the screen. Does not seem to be somebody who is worried about her her safety in, in my opinion I don't think that men or women 
uh, if they're getting chased or worried about, you know, messing around with their hair or anything. But that's look to, that looks to me like what she is doing. So let's move on to the second part of this. And uh, there she is. She's running. Uh, I have to say, I don't know, Candy. I don't know how she runs. Um, but her, her running to me seems a little strange, but I understand she might have been barefoot. So that could certainly uh, be a factor why um, she's running. But I will tell you this, once again, having watched a lot of police videos p of people getting chased, people who want to get away, she's not really running like that. Um, and as we get uh, down towards the end of this video, in fact, when she gets, you'll notice right here, there's a creek bed. It looks like it's a couple feet. You'll notice that she doesn't jump in there. I think that if she was worried about her safety, that she would just maybe a bit haphazardly be jumping into this creek. Instead, she kind of, what I would say, tiptoes her way, which maybe could be a factor once again of her being, uh, not having any shoes, shoes on. That is at least my understanding. She did not have any shoes on. But you'll see her kind of, you know, kind of pick her way and and then down there and then she's running and you see her running uh, to the left. Now, I, I, you know, it's hard to get inside her mind, especially if she had something mental going on. And let me go back uh, to this. But there's one more point I want to make uh, regarding this. You'll notice uh, here she is once again, uh, what I would say stumbling around uh, and then we see of course see the sheriff he even says that she looks distressed and then what you notice is she isn't looking around she isn't looking behind her see, to see if anybody is chasing her which is a common trait for people who believe they are getting chased once again watching uh any criminal video getting chased as i've already stated a couple times she's not doing that her eyes are as you will see once again to play it again. Uh, you can see she's not, she's looking straight ahead. And um, contrary to how people usually behave in these circumstances. Now, what does that mean? It's, it's hard to say, but I would, what I would say is that at least looking at this video, at least in her mind, it doesn't seem like she thought anybody was following her. Now, she might have thought that a few minutes ago, but in that moment of running down there, she's not looking to see if anybody is, is following her. And I, I want you to keep this in mind. Once again, not just watching this video, but any videos that you see in the future regarding missing people. How are those people behaving? What is their body language? If they're walking, running, well, what are they doing if they're running or walking? And this, it seems to be a woman who, I wouldn't say she is fearful. It looks to me, from my experience, like she is worried and, and confused. And not necessarily fearful for her life. Uh, I would also say that her picking to, you know, I don't know how well she knows this area, to say, did she know that creek bed was there? Um... You know, is that the plan all along? And on top of everything else, we don't know why she chose to run off right in the middle of the phone call that she wanted that she wanted made to her mother. But uh, what I can tell from this video is that I don't believe anybody was really chasing her. I'm not saying that those three teenage boys didn't harass her. They maybe very well have did. I wasn't there. But there's nothing that I see here to to, to believe that anybody was chasing her for the purposes of harming her, at least from her body language in this video. Okay, and I am back now for point number two. Point number two is mental health is not guaranteed from moment to moment. Uh, I want you to know that I'm not a health professional. Uh, I, in fact, did not do very well in those particular topics uh, in high school or college, just so you know. But over the past almost five years, I've had an opportunity to talk to many guests 
who um, knew what their brothers and sisters, parents, children were going through. And so we do talk a lot about mental health in general as lay people. These guests tell me what was going on in the missing person's life. They might have had uh, a bipolar disorder, might have been a paranoid uh, schizophrenic, for example, Claudia Wells. So I have a lot of experience talking about mental illness, even though I am not a professional. And however, I can tell you about my own uh, personal mental health. I have to admit that I think my mental health has been pretty good in my life, but I have experienced panic attacks, although I've not experienced one recently. I've maybe had four or five in the last four or five years. And why they come on, I don't know. But you can quickly go, and I'm sure many of you have had that happen as well. You go from feeling perfectly fine, then within a minute, you feel totally not fine. I know for me, I would explain it as every thought that I've ever had in my mind since I was born is trying to cram its way into my mind at one time, trying to cram its way to the forefront, into my consciousness, I think that's what it would be, um, at one time. And they usually last about 15 minutes. Now, these days, um, I can kind of, when I feel them coming on, I know what to do, and so I don't have them happen. But it took me a while. And I think that's the reason I've only had four or five. I think it's very possible that I could have uh, had many more. And I'm here to tell you, uh, I don't have anything going on in my life where I should panic about anything, just to be honest. But they still happen. And so that's kind of what I mean, at least on a personal level, when uh, your mental health is uh, not guaranteed from moment to moment. You can be here one moment being feeling totally fine, the next one, nothing, none of your environment changes, but your mental stability does. And so we have covered some disappearances that at least seem like it. Um, Chris Sanders is a disappearance we covered in Texas where it seemed like he was fine. And then all of a sudden, uh, witnesses say he went out to his vehicle, his truck to get something, and then walked away from it. Left the driver's side door open, and the the, um, the truck alarm, car alarm, uh, truck alarm, it was a truck, was blaring. You know, the horn going off, off, and there was Chris just walking down the street, not caring about it. Now, you should know there is there are people out there who believe that foul play... Um, could be involved in Chris's disappearance. I'm not a person who subscribes to that. But this just shows you how if this did happen and um, these were the circumstances of Chris's disappearance, you can see one moment he's fine and then all of a sudden he's walking away from his truck with the door open for seemingly no reason. We had covered a disappearance of Keith Fetter who went to his ex-wife's with some friends and just before they were about to leave, Keith started acting like a totally different person. And his friends had to kind of like herd him into the car. They got in the car. They left. They got down to the end of the street, maybe 600 feet away. When they stopped, as soon as they stopped, Keith jumped out of the vehicle, ran off, ran into the woods. Didn't run back to the house, ran off into the woods. Uh, this happened in Martinsville, Virginia uh, some years ago. He's still not been found. So once again, he's fine one moment, the next moment totally different person to the point that he's jumping out of a car, running into the woods, never being seen again. We covered the disappearance of Ren uh, Renee Lamana. Now, in her case, she had been struggling with some mental issues for quite a while. But in this particular case, she was around people who uh, were not trying to harm her. They were trying to help her, one of those people being her sister. And her sister uh, took Renee to her um, house in Ocean City, New Jersey. Try to get calm her down, get her some treatment, get her in a very relaxed environment. And in a second, um, Renee uh, ran out of the house at night. Uh, Ren uh, the sister and another guy who was there ran after Renee, went out into the street to try to find her, did not see her. She went missing. And there have been some sightings of her, but I don't particularly believe them, but her family does. But that's a disappearance that is almost 30 years old. She is still missing. So this is, and we've covered many disappearances like this on the program with people who seemingly have something mental going on. And many of these instances 
are there fine one second and then not fine the next. It's very common. I just don't know if the public realizes this. So in Candy's situation, I don't know. Maybe she had been struggling with her mental health for a long time. I don't know. But if this was something where she was fine when the day started and then this all happened um, and she's running off uh, like she did, as I just showed in the video, um, this is very common. And I don't want anybody to think about, oh, this is so strange, this is so odd. It's not really that odd when it comes to disappearances. In fact, many disappearance facts um, play out, or the string of events, play out very similar to Candy's. Now, what's tough about this, though, is uh, it's tough when the concern is women going missing. Because with men... Uh, first of all, men are more likely to have mental illness. We're more likely to commit suicide. We're more like to, likely to have addictions. It's much more common. Whereas with women, we always have to keep in mind that it's very possible that, yes, maybe she had a mental health issue and ran off, but it also could be that some guy murdered her. Because if women are going to disappear, and it's possibly foul play, it's mostly do likely done by a man who knows her. Uh, everybody knows it's a very well-known stat uh, with crime, not just in the United States, but all over the world. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, this is not, does not look like the situation in Candy's, uh, but who knows where she ran after she you know, left the video. But it, you have to think, let's put it this way. If we didn't have that video, if she hadn't gone to that house, and if that – person hadn't taken that video, and I think it was very smart uh, of that person to do so, very, you know, thinking on her feet, uh, a, a very good thing to do. If we didn't have that, what might we be thinking? We might be thinking that uh, somebody, maybe the boyfriend that just broke up with her, if that's what happened with, uh, broke up with Candy, maybe he did something to her. Or these three teenage boys did something to her. Would, would much be more much likely to think that without the video. And so uh, the, the video certainly uh, is playing uh, a big part uh, in this. And, of course, that takes me to point number three of this. But what's important to, to remember about point number two is that mental illness, uh, although it is not the most common reason for disappearances, it is a big factor. And just because people are fine at 1 p.m. in the afternoon doesn't mean they're going to be fine at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, I, I've had to learn that myself doing this program for all five, uh, almost five years. Have you, had you told me that back at the beginning, I probably would have rejected it. But it's something that I've learned uh, over the last almost five years. I guess you could say I've learned it the hard way. So moving on to number three. Uh, searches fail even with w video. Searches have been uh, a big theme on Unfound in 2021. I think because we started the year covering the disappearance of Jason Landry on an Unfound now, and he is still missing, even though uh, we all know where his car was wrecked. We know that he was trying to drive home. We know that he took the wrong road for some reason. All of his belongings were found, in, in, in including his phone. Uh, at least two major searches have been done for him in an area, although I've not been there. Um, I would not call it the toughest area uh, to search. Once again, looking at it the way I have, just on Google Street View and Google Maps. Um, he's still missing. Uh, he disappeared in December of 2020, so over six months ago. He is still missing. So searches in general have been a, a big theme, and uh, I've mentioned them uh, quite a bit this year in disappearances we've covered on the program, searches that are done and no, nothing is found. That is also common, just like point number two, mental illness, how people can change very quickly is common. In disappearances, searches being done and uh, nothing being found is very common as well. And in this situation, you can look at the video, you know that she ran into the creek. You know that she went left, and there's no reason to believe she could have, at least there's nothing on video to believe that she reversed course. Maybe she did. 
but you know the direction she was going. It was daylight. Uh, I'm guessing the people that live in that area know that area fairly well. Um, of course, it's not a city, but I wouldn't call that area, looking at a map, uh, wilderness. Searches have been done. I think her family has done a fantastic job in getting the word out about her disappearance and and, and, and being very uh, transparent about that day, about this video and everything. And still, even with video, uh, she, you know, she has not been found. This is also very common. So if you're coming across disappearances for the first time and or, uh, you know, looking at candies and this is the first disappearance that you know about, where she actually saw somebody running in a yard, running away, there are a lot of pictures and video cameras, surveillance cameras, bank cameras, doorbell cameras of missing people, and the people are still missing. Video is not the cure-all. I, I think I was talking about that last month um, with F the FBI. Video is not a cure-all either. Just because you have video of somebody walking away from their house, driving away from their house, walking away from a job, it doesn't it doesn't mean much. Uh, having people on video uh, does not make a disappearance easier to solve. Unless, of course, the video shows a person jumping off a bridge or something like that. And then, of course, that would be different. We'd know then, oh, she jumped off the bridge and she's probably deceased and she's downriver somewhere. Um, other than that, video does not seem to be that helpful. And, and I'm going to name some uh, disappearances that we've once again covered on, on Unfound that kind of go along with Candy's disappearance. Crystal Morrison, she was uh, uh, went missing in North Carolina in 2011. She uh, was seen on a video in a convenience store. And after that, she was never seen again. I have to admit at the time, I thought foul play. Could have been involved, uh, but in 2019, so eight years later, her remains were found on private property on uh, no more than a mile from that uh, convenience store. And uh, her family is satisfied with the idea that she had walked away. Uh, she was sick at the time. She was under underweight. She was not an addict anymore, but she was a recovering addict. And it was 100 degrees in North Carolina that day, and it seems that she had some sort of heat stroke and died where she was found. Her family is satisfied with, uh, with the coroner in that area uh, decided in looking at her remains. Picture of her, video of her, did not help authorities find her. She was found by accident, as a matter of fact. Um, we have Rashawn Francis. In fact, the disappearance that was just covered on Unfound this past Friday Picture of him walking in Dixon City, uh, Pennsylvania. Has not been any help in finding him. Brandy Wells, a disappearance from Texas. She went to a country bar. She left. You can see her on video. My opinion is she is with the guy in the white cowboy hat. You'd have to see the video to know what I mean. That hasn't helped authorities find her either. And the guy in the white hat, to my knowledge, has never been identified. And then probably the, the, the most illustrative example of this is Brennan Smokey, uh, a young man who was with two other guys. They were getting chased by the police uh, They on the highway. They uh, kind of, uh, as you've seen police chases, they kind of went to the side of the road, ditched the car, and Brennan and another guy tried to run. And in fact... Uh, a passerby just happened to catch Brennan running away from the car on his cell phone. So the driver's going by or the passenger's going by. The police are there. You can see them. This person's with his phone uh, filming Brennan running into the woods. Brennan is still missing. And I, I didn't write down the year that this actually happened, but uh, this is not like a disappearance that happened uh, last year. It happened in the 21st century, but... The point being that he was seen on video running into the woods, police chasing him. Still not been found. So we just have to remember that. And, and so why is that? Why is it that video doesn't help? Mainly because uh, when these disappearances are solved, that with people who have been caught on video walking away, running away, driving away, is because usually they are not found near the video camera. 
even in Crystal Morrison's case, she's almost a mile away. Even though you know she's at that convenience store on video camera, on the video camera, she was discovered a mile away. This is the main reason. So, video cameras can give us maybe a direction to look, but once a person goes off that camera, they could go anywhere. So, in Candy's situation, it makes sense to look in the direction that she was running in that creek bed, but but it very well may be that she reversed course. Um, you know, there are a lot of different possible different possibilities, even though we there's no proof of that on video. So, to conclude this uh, particular unfound now episode, uh, if Candy's family is watching, I just have some suggestions for you. Um, you know, some just some observations I have. And you're more than welcome to contact me at unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, just so you know my credentials, I've covered over 200 disappearances in the last almost five years. Uh, and um, I think I have a very good standing in the missing persons community. Some of those things. There's nothing I see in the public statements, anything that I personally know or have read about Candy's disappearance to believe that foul play occurred. Nothing that I've seen, despite her having a problem with a boyfriend, despite these teenage boys harassing her. Uh, also, though, there's nothing I see in the public comments, public statements, or anything else to believe that Candy is deceased. Uh, there are no ways I can see that she would have committed suicide unless she had some sort of weapon on her, but I, I wouldn't know that. Um, so, so there's every reason to believe that she is still alive. I want you to know that. Uh, the problem, if Candy is still in the same mental mode that she was on June 1st, 2021, all the outreach that you're doing might not actually help. And I've been told this by more than one, uh, missing persons expert who have been, who has been doing this longer than I have is that. When you have missing people who might be paranoid, uh, think the people that are after them, even though people aren't, then when you are trying to find that person, and if that person, let's just call her Jane Doe, finds out that people are looking for her, she doesn't define that as help. That only reinforces what she thinks anyway, which is people are after me, people are trying to harm me. And so they... They run farther, they run faster. And that's, uh, when I say run, I mean they get away, they get out of that area, they go somewhere else. This is well known, okay? So you have to keep this, you have to keep this in mind as you uh, try to figure out what happened to Candy. It's very possible that almost two months later, she is still in that same mental mode that she was on June 1st, which it was one of... Um, fleeing and it very well may be because of something going on with her mentally well just it's it's reasonable to believe to think that she's in that mode that day that she's still in it now and that may be the reason you are having problems finding her even though she is still alive okay um candy was lucid in some respect though uh, that's uh, that's something that that is obvious to me. She wasn't so disconnected from reality that she didn't know who everybody was. She stopped at that house and she wanted somebody to 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 call her mother. So there was a part of her that was still based in reality. Um, but it also, as I illustrated in the in the video, I think it's fair to say that her running like she did, her actions, playing with her hair, etc., shows me that. Also, something was not totally right with the way she was thinking as well. Okay, but there's reason to believe that she would, was at least partially um, lucid, is the word, clear thinking, uh, at least for part, you know, before that video started. Uh, I would also say it makes sense. I don't know. I, I understand that her mother lived close by. Somebody, a family member lived close by. It makes sense to me that, she was choosing to run in that direction, but being that she hasn't been found, I'm guessing people tried to go between where she was last seen on video and that house. 
Um, I'm, I'm guessing that that has been done. But for the family, I also want you to know, as is proof with Jason Landry's disappearance, that searches are very hit and miss. And it pays to go over the same areas once, twice, three times. Uh, you have to remember that the human body is not that large compared to any search area. And I would also say what Candy was wearing that day, even though it's pink or purple and you wouldn't think that that would be very good cam camouflage, you get amongst the leaves, the foliage, the trees, you would be amazed at how much that color might blend in. It is not a color that would really jump out. If it was uh, fluorescent orange, uh, maybe some other colors, um, you know, colors maybe you would say are not uh, natural to nature, then uh, that would be different. But what she was wearing there, you would be surprised how well it could blend in. So uh, that is uh, my suggestions to the family that once again, they can contact me at any time. I mean, I'm here to help. I work for free. And um, I appreciate you watching this episode of Unfound now. And this is a monthly series. And so you can look for me again towards the end of August. Once again, please uh, consider subscribing to this channel and uh, liking this video. And if you feel like donating to the program, patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast or paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast. Thanks for watching.